want to I want to share with you something else though, uh, and then I'm going to read this to you because it is an, another interesting part of Bram that I got a heck of a lot more proof to uh, than some of these issues that, that you mentioned. So I'm going to read this to you. It is a quote with all. I'm going to read you a quote, and I want you to kind of think about it, Rick, and then we'll just we'll digest. I don't know how much longer you want to keep going here, but I do want to get this in because it's a part of Bram Stoker that not many people know about and that uh, Jason and I and John wanted to, wanted to utilize this um, as, as a special thing to talk about in Bram's life. And uh, I haven't talked about it in many podcasts either, but here we go. Do you not think that there are things which you cannot understand, and yet which are that some people can see that others cannot? Do you, can you not understand that there are some there are things that some people can see that others cannot? Any idea what that's referring to? It sounds a lot like he's talking about just faith and people's hope in their in their belief system. I think it goes deeper. Do you not think that there are things that some people can see and others cannot? I heard the term second sight, Rick. You know that term? Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, I could see that being an interpretation of that as well, but so he's just more sensitive to things that are around them, be it yet yeah. sounds being extra sensory. So that's one little piece of evidence. And here's an example for your listeners. Uh, there's something that I found in the story that didn't mean much until I started looking into some of his other. He wrote chapter while he was in Pruden Bay, Scotland. Now I've been to twice. Caught the mystery of the sea is the book, but the early chapter that he released was the seer, and it is a lady come down from the Highlands, Scotland, named Gormala, who had second sight. Our second sight, she could see things that others could not. She could see the future. She could see beyond what normal people were seeing. She could see, in one case, that someone's child was going to die the next day. Sure enough, there was an accident at, at the ocean. The baby drowned. That very same baby that Gormala saw. Okay, so far that's the fiction, right? Bear with me. So I found an article in the Dundee, Scotland newspaper written by a guy. It says he went to Dundee to meet Henry Irving and his manager, Bram Stoker, after they were performing in the theater. There was a wonderful gathering in the nice big house, and he found Bram Stoker sitting by a fireplace with a small people around. Far more interesting than Henry Irving, who was talking about it, was no most. There was Brad with a brandy in his hand and a cigar, and they were all engaged in a discussion about second sight. Because you see, people in Scotland, at least in the Highlands, had this sort of propensity to be interested in this and also to certain people to experience it. This ability to see out there the things. And Norval Scrimonger, the writer, wrote this article in 1930 or 31, years after 1904, when this incident happened. So I had the pleasure of listening to this, and now it's time to share this with you, that Bram Stoker mentioned, as the discussion was going on, he wasn't giving a lecture or anything, just talking, that he too witnessed, while he was visiting Scotland, two instances of second sight. One was family he was visiting where the mother was holding their young child, two or three-year-old, and the five-year-old came in and was crying. The mother said, what's the matter? Oh, and I don't know the name, but the name of the baby in arms at the moment, Little Mary will play with me. Why not? She's dead. What a funny thing for a young girl to say. What do you mean? No, she's dead. She won't play. No, she's quite healthy. She's fine. 
And in fact, Bram said, there is no sickness, there is nothing. And yet the next day, Bram found out that the child woke up dead. So this young girl either was really lucky in her prediction or she possessed some kind of sick sight. And then he went on to a second story that spanned over two years where Slane's castle, the big castle in Cruden, incidentally, the castle, as I've told you, Rick, and, and, and you know about it because you've got a two-year poster of your in your room there. That's the castle Bram used the interior lake out of for his interior of his fictional castle, Dracula. The Earl of Errol lived in there, and he invited some of the more fancy people to go on a pheasant shoot, and Bram was invited. And as a shooter, you're given a loader, much like a fishing guide. You get a guy to come along, carry the shotgun for you, to help you on your way and load the gun. You're booping and he's loading and changing guns. And you develop a rapport with the guy over the course of the day. And I'm being polite. said, well, how's the Earl? And this Highland guide says, oh, the sheet is high. And Bram goes, what do you mean? The sheet, he's high. He's not well. But Rick, the sheet being high is, you know, the sheet that gets pulled over the head. And the guy dies. Mm. It was being, you know, it was high. So clear. It's getting there. Yes. Yes. And the shoot ends and the all it ends for Bram. He's up there a couple of weeks. The Earl is fine and Bram goes back to London. He comes back to Pruden Bay the next summer, as he did for 12 or 13 summers. And he's invited out again for another shoot. And he requests the same loader because he wants to question the guy. Well, how are you again? Nice to see you, sir. How is the Earl? I see he's quite well. You 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 made a mistake last year. He goes, oh no, the sheet is higher still. Oh, it's too bad. Seems bad. No, not at all. But it's higher. And apparently, either three or four days later, the Earl in excellent health had an unexpected brain aneurysm and died. So one could say. Yeah, all you got to do is keep saying the sheet's getting higher. The book gets high eventually. But, you know, that, that that's that's one more little piece. Those two stories. Ram writes a story on seeing. And one more thing. I found in Bram's uh, a list of books in his personal library, John Edgar Browning, a professor at kept the list of all these, and found that Bram Stoker had a book, this guy McRae, read it and did a book review of this book of Second Sight in the Highlands of Scotland. And the review was the only book that anyone's been able to find. And trust me, if anyone's going to find it, it's going to be John Edgar Burning. And it was published in a New Zealand newspaper. And it was published very favorably about this book about Second Sight in the Highlands of Scotland. It wasn't sort of making fun and poo-pooing this kind of strange idea of Second Sight. You were saying, oh, that, you know, in some cases it can be true, in some cases it can be hoax. Very recently, as contacted by the Rosenbach Museum, who was trying to raise money, because they have the opportunity to buy one ch- manuscript, uh, one one chapter of one of the last books Bran wrote called Famous Imposters. And it was a whole chapter on mesmerism, which is mind control, the, the mm-hmm. Lucy, excuse me, the mean uh, kind of Dracula thing, mesmer. Or, is it true or is it fake? And again, Bran writes all about that. So all of those little pieces of circumsexual evidence, Rick, connected together and that opening statement that I just read to you, yet there are some things that people, uh, other people can see that think pe- other people cannot, makes me believe that Bram, maybe he was a believer in Second Sight, but he certainly was aware of it and was interested in it and, and acknowledged that it existed. And I think that makes Bram 
that much more interesting, well-rounded, open-minded person. To go far beyond the simple question of sexuality, it's much more open-minded about life in general, about mental things, you know, physical beings and so on. Very interesting, I think, part of his life. And again, Jason and John and I have, you know, worked that into the into the script, into the story, so that it, it shows Bram as a really kind of a deep thinker. And uh, I'll sort of finish this segment with another quote from the novel, There are Mysteries in life which men can only get at, which age by age they may solve only in part. We may not know the answers. And in time, with more scientific exploration, more mental exploration, more experiences, we may understand things. But right now, we may not. And so what? You know, they are what they are. Let's go with it. 